Hi, 7th grade. Welcome back. Uh, today's topic will be focusing on Islam. In order to understand Islam, like I said before, we must understand uh, Judaism and Christianity because they do build on each other and they do, um, they do uh, heavily influence each other. Um, so to start off, we're going to focus on some vocabulary. Islam is a religion. So Islam is a a religion. It's a religion founded or started um, around the year 610. Founded around 610 uh, in Saudi Arabia by the prophet, it's another prophet, the prophet, this is, this is, uh, this prophet you obviously have to know, prophet is named Muhammad, okay, so it's a religion founded around 610, so about 600 years after Jesus in Saudi Arabia, for those of you guys wondering, Saudi Arabia is this one in uh, pink, uh, it was in Saudi Arabia back then, but this is the region where it developed. More importantly, uh, this city, the city of Mecca, is going to be really important. Okay? Uh, and we'll talk about it why in, in, in a little bit. A, and uh, Islam means... Um, Islam means uh, submission. I think it's two S's. Uh, submission. And people that practice Islam are submitting to God. To the will of God. So Islam is a religion. A Muslim is a person that practices Islam. Okay. A person. Who. Practices. When I say practice means they are. They, they, they do the rituals of Islam. For example a Christian. Uh, follows Christianity. Okay. A Muslim follows Islam. A person who practices. Uh, Islam. Or the teachings found in Islam. So Islam is a religion. A Muslim is a person. Uh, Muslims don't just live here. Muslims live all over the world. Okay. A Muslim can be anyone. I can be a Muslim. Anyone can be a Muslim. You can convert to Islam. Right. You can become a Muslim. The same way how you can convert to Christianity. You can become or convert to uh, Islam. Okay. So Saudi Arabia, like I said before, is this area here in pink. Uh, it includes, um, it, it's this country, it's a country, right? Uh, this whole area is known as the Arabian Peninsula, okay? Uh, but for now, we're focusing primarily only on Saudi Arabia, the country. Saudi Arabia is a, a country in the... Middle, Middle East. Again, the Middle East is all this region. If you remember, the Holy Land, the Promised Land, is this area here, also known as Palestine, is this this whole area here. Okay, so so Islam developed south of the Promised Land. Okay, so. Um, the Middle East, sorry, that got erased. Uh, home to the birthplace of Islam. So I'm going to say birthplace of Islam. And now we're going to talk about one specific city or region in, in Saudi Arabia. And that city is, it's really, really important that you know this city. The city is Mecca. Mecca is important for a number of reasons, but the most important reason why Mecca is important, the city is Mecca, it's also spelled with a K, is because it's the location where this is. Uh, and we'll talk about what that is in a minute. So it is uh, important for a number of reasons. One, birthplace, birthplace of Muhammad. 
And you'll see in a second that Muhammad is a prophet. In Islam, Muhammad is a prophet of God. Muhammad uh, is talked to by God through the angel Gabriel. Again, angel Gabriel makes an appearance. And in Islam, he is seen as the last prophet of God. Uh, he is seen as, as a last prophet in the list of prophets that includes Jesus, that includes Abraham, that includes Moses. So Muslims uh, accept these other prophets, but they say that Muhammad is the last prophet. And another reason why uh, Mecca is important is because it is the home to the Kaaba. You need to know this word. The Kaaba is this, um, this cube. It's pretty big. Like these are people, like this is a person. Um, it's not like a, like a skyscraper or anything, but it is big enough, right? And you'll learn a lot about the Kaaba. But the Kaaba, it is said, that was built or rebuilt by Abraham and his son. If you remember last time when we talked about uh, Abraham sacrificing his son Isaac, in, in Islam it's different. In Islam it's the other son, Ismail, who is uh, who God asked uh, uh, Abraham to sacrifice. And according to Islam, God stopped Abra uh, Abraham from sacrificing him. And then they, they built, they built the Kaaba in Mecca, right? A little bit of background about, um, about Abraham. Abraham had, so Abraham, Abraham has a wife and he has a slave. With the wife, uh, they have Isaac and with the slave, they have Ismail. Uh, the slave's name is Hagar. I don't remember. I don't know exactly how to spell it, but I'll find out. Um, the the Muslims trace their lineage here. This is Islam, and this is Judaism and Christianity. So they trace they trace their background through Ismail, not Isaac. It is said that the wife of Abraham told Abraham that he needed to get rid of the slave slave, and also Ismail. And that he left, the prom according to Islam, he left the promised land and went, went here. And there they built the Kaaba. In Islam, Abraham and Ismail built the Kaaba. And what is the Kaaba? The Kaaba is a symbol a structure to represent God, right? It is not God itself. It is a structure to celebrate the one God, the God of Abraham. So Abraham, that's why we had to focus on, on Judaism because Abraham makes an appearance again. Um, Islam traces its background or its history to Abraham, but not Abraham and Isaac, but Abraham and Ismail, okay? Um, Muslims pray, when they pray, Muslims pray five times a day. When they pray, they face the Kaaba. They face in the direction of the Kaaba. You might, be, you might ask me, how do they know what the direction is? I'm sure, they, I'm sure there's ways they can figure it out. But when they pray, they always face the direction of the Kaaba. The Kaaba is this structure to represent God. And this is going to be a really, really important topic in the next couple of weeks because we're going to spend a whole week talk, talking about just the Kaaba and something that Muslims do every year. Uh, it's called the pilgrimage. We'll talk about it. The Kaaba is really important. They don't necessarily pray to the Kaaba itself. They pray to what the Kaaba represents. So uh, Mecca is important because Muhammad was born there and also because it is the location of the Kaaba. That is the number one reason. The location of the Kaaba is really important. So the Kaaba in Islam built by Abraham and Ismail to represent the one God. Okay. 
I hope you guys are getting this. So represent the one God. That's the Kaaba right there. That's the building. Now, Muhammad, we're going to spend a lot of time talking on Muhammad, about, about Muhammad, right? You're going to watch a video in a second. This video is going to be longer because we're going to make the notes and the video together. Uh, Muhammad is a prophet in Islam. He is chosen by God to carry his message. Okay? Uh, during the time of Muhammad, during the time of Muhammad, this area, most people in this area were uh, polytheistic. Okay? And you'll see that because of Muhammad, that changes. That changes to monotheism. In the time of Muhammad, the, the Kaaba was used to honor hundreds of gods. And Muhammad, according to Islam, uh, changed that to honor the only one, one God. Okay? So Muhammad, in Islam, he is known as prophet. He is a prophet of God who received God's last message. And this book, his fo the followers of Muhammad are going to write a book that, that uh, copies everything that God told Muhammad. This book is going to be known as the Quran. It's a book. The Jews have the Torah. Christians have the Bible. Muslims have the Quran. So timeline of Abrahamic religions. So this is 2000 BC to 1500 BCE. This is Judaism. Here is Christianity from 27 uh, to 33 CE. This is Christianity. And here is Judaism. So about 2,600 years in span. Okay. If you keep going this way, then eventually you get to us. Um, so again, Abraham is still really, 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 really important in this. It, he plays a huge role. Uh, Jesus also plays a huge role in, in, in Islam. Okay. I'm going to show you guys a video. So we'll play it here. I'll stop it once in a while. This video is going to be longer. But this is all you're working on today. Not a problem. We're still... How Islam began in under 10 minutes. Not a problem. We've started. Okay, so travel back in time with me to a land far, far away and long, long ago. Mecca and Arabia, about the year 570. Mecca is important for two reasons. As you can see here, Mecca is spelled with an A. Uh, it is the same location. One, the Kaaba is there, an ancient temple built to worship God. And two, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born in Mecca. Now, problem. I can't show you Muhammad, because it wouldn't be right. I'll tell you why in a bit. But in the meantime, here's his name in Arabic. Nice. Back in the day, Mecca was a lawless place. The only way to be safe was to have backup. Lots of rich big brothers who'd beat up anyone who got in your way. So the place was ruled by the most powerful families who could do pretty much what they wanted. And religion didn't help. By this time, the Kaaba had been filled to overflowing with 360 idols that did nothing to help anyone. So it was a tough place. So right now they're talking about, uh, uh, they're talking about the time of, 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 of Muhammad, right? Remember, we have to go way back all the way to the time of Abraham to understand what the Kaaba represents. The Kaaba represents the one God. But by the time of Muhammad, the Kaaba had been, was being used to, to honor many, many gods. To grow up, if, like Muhammad, you were a poor orphan and believed in just one God you couldn't see, like the Jews and the Christians, he called him Allah, the God, in Arabic there. So God in Arabic means uh, Allah. So when people say, uh, when Muslims or whoever says Allah, that, that just means Arabic. It's Arabic for God. Muhammad's dad died before he was even born, and his mom died when he was just six. So he was brought up by his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, and then, when he died too, by his uncle, Abu Talib, who had the respect of the city's ruling families, so Muhammad was safe for the time being. Muhammad started out as a shepherd and then became a businessman traveling about buying and selling stuff for rich clients. So he was a merchant. He was a buyer and seller. 
When he did some work for a rich widow called Khadija, she was so impressed by his honesty and skill that they ended up getting married. And for a while, it looked like Muhammad was going places. Well, he was, but not how you think. Every year in the month of Ramadan, different calendar, different names for the months, there was a big party around the Kaaba when people made sacrifices to the idols. Muhammad hated it, so he'd get out of town and sleep in a cave he'd found on top of a nearby mountain. Pay attention to this because uh, this is when Muhammad receives the first message from God. One night, Muhammad's praying to Allah when wham! There's the angel Jibreel, you might say Gabriel, standing right in front of him. Read, says the angel, but Muhammad couldn't read. No schools, you see. Jibreel keeps on at him. Three times he says, read. Then he grabs hold of Muhammad and wham! Again, it's like Muhammad's learned the words off by heart. So he recites the message out loud. Read in the name of your Lord, who created man from a drop of blood. Read, for your Lord is most generous. He who taught by the pen, taught man what he did not know. It was a message from Allah. God was speaking to him, just like he'd spoken to the prophets in the Jewish and Christian holy books, which meant he was a prophet too. So I hope you guys understand this. So uh, according to this video, the same God that talked to Moses, Abraham, um, is the same God that is talking to Abraham, to, uh, to Muhammad, uh, through the same angel, right? The same angel that told the Virgin Mary she was going to have the Son of God. Same angel. So you have this connection. The messages continued for the rest of Muhammad's life. Allah gave him the words to say and the Prophet recited them. The words were written down by his friends and years later they were collected together and became the Muslim holy book, the Quran, which means recitation, because Muhammad recited it, you see? Anyway, that was much later, so back to the night of power. Muhammad tells his family, then his friends, and eventually everyone about Allah, that he's the one and only God, that he wants everyone to be treated fairly, and long story short, it didn't go down well with the ruling families of Mecca, who liked things just the way they were, thank you very much. You see, Islam means obedience to Allah, and Muslim means someone who obeys Allah, and the ruling families didn't want anyone obeying anyone else but them. So the people who believed in Muhammad's message, the Muslims, were given a hard time. Some were even tortured and killed. A few of them managed to escape to Abyssinia, Ethiopia. But most were stuck in Mecca. Muhammad also had to cope with the death of his wife. And then just a few weeks later, his uncle too. Feeling very down, he went to the Kaaba to pray to Allah one night. Then, the weirdest thing happened. Jibreel turns up, sits... We'll stop, we'll stop here because this goes into other topics. But big idea is... Um, Muhammad is the founder of, of Islam. Islam means uh, submission. A Muslim is a person that it follows Islam, those who submit. Um, Islam was, cre uh, was founded by Abraham around the year 610, between 610 and 630, in Saudi Arabia, right, in the city of Mecca. You'll see that at one point, uh, the the people of Mecca push Abraham out of, of Mecca and, and, and ask him to go to, or he flees, sorry, he flees to Medina, okay? His, this, this, uh, this, this migration is the beginning of the Islamic calendar. So in the Islamic calendar, it is not the year uh, 2020, it's like the year 16 something, because this happened in the 600s. Um, you have questions on the video. If you get anything under 70%, you will have to do it again. I might have a document in there about Muhammad, um, so you can review. Uh, please try your best. I appreciate all of you. Bye-bye.